ChatGPT, give me a recipe for the world's best birria tacos. Hey, you almost said it right this time. Well done. Here's the recipe. Make it now. Hey guys, Dave here back in the AI kitchen and I'm doing this uh, like at late at night, like 8.30. The reason is because this recipe that ChatGPT has created calls for marinating our meat overnight. And that's what we need to do. Now I've had birria tacos before, which is what we're basically doing here. And they are amazing. So I'm very excited about it. And it calls for some really interesting things, ancho chili, Chili's Wajelio <laughs> Chili's, I don't know how to say it, uh, but we're gonna try to cook it. So it says what we need to do is how many, how much of this do we need? We need four of these seeds removed, and then we need two of these seeds removed. I wonder if we're supposed to remove the seeds now or later. Okay, yeah, it says to remove them now, so I don't know. Let's see, is there any seeds in them? This one doesn't even have any seeds in it. So I'm not a professional cook, guys. Never have been, never claimed to be, never will be. I mean, maybe one day if I ever like, you know, made it big. Maybe I'd uh, take cooking classes. Would that make me a professional cook though? I don't know. All right, so I'm just gonna crack these all open, I guess, and uh, try to take the seats out because that's what it's telling me to do. It's gonna be hard to maintain the structural integrity of them if I'm doing that, but that's all right. Must not matter. That doesn't need to be perfect. But anyways, we're gonna just do that. De-seed these bad boys. The seeds are probably where a lot of the spice is. We have had burrilla, burrilla, burrilla whatever. Burria. Tacos. Tacos before and they're really good. And so I was just sitting there and I was inspired. I was inspired to try to see if I could make them. But here what we like to do is we like to give AI a chance to like make a new recipe, something that's not commonly already made. Something you won't just find on Google, right? Something that's unique and delicious. And honestly, AI is pretty darn good at coming up with recipes. Uh, it doesn't always win. Sometimes like the ice cream sundae soup that it made. Sometimes it's a flop. Wow. <laughs> well guys, let me try a little bit more. I forgot the cherry. Maybe that'll help. Ugh. This is disgusting. <laughs> Don't cook this. Don't cook it. But a lot of times it's not. So I'm always excited to try it. Always an adventure. Wow, this is slimy in it. Anyways, we got these little peppers all de-seeded. They're gonna go into a pan and we're gonna just like heat them up until they're fragrant and smell good. Probably should get a spatula or something. Eh, sounds like a future day of problem. There, that's already heated up. Look, there's still like seeds in it. I feel like the seeds are gonna fall out though, eventually. That there's a lot of seeds in this one though. I almost feel like I forgot this one. All right, let me get like tongs. Okay, so we're gonna like let them get fragrant and then we're gonna throw them in hot water. I've got water like almost at a boil over here. I'll just throw them in there for like 20 to 30 minutes so they can get all soft. All right, but first let's turn these around. Is it hot in here? Yeah, it's pretty hot. It's getting hot in this pan. So take out all your seeds. <laughs> uh, don't ask guys, I'm kind of weird. Yeah, we're just not a fancy cooking channel. We're not pro cooks. We just are here to have some fun and try some new foods and yeah, experiment a little bit. Ugh. We also are gonna need chipotles and adobo. We're gonna need chuck roast. That's what we're gonna marinate. And of course, we're gonna need some short rib because yum. All right, this water is boiling. I'm gonna turn off the heat on it. These are getting pretty fragrant, I'll be honest. So since they're fragrant, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna drop them into our really hot water. There's our spicy hot water. We're just gonna put the chilies into it. And they're gonna be in it for 20 minutes and that's gonna make them nice and soft. Now we're gonna take a chuck roast, which is like one of the best meats, totally underappreciated. A two pounder, this is two and a half, that's all right. Close enough, I think I'm a little short on the short ribs, so. Take that and just cut it into large chunks with a nice sharp knife. Uh, let's see. Eventually it's gonna be like shreddable once we're all done. So it's not a big deal the size of the chunks. We just want it to be a decent size. So we're just chopping that up into nice big chunks. Should I remove some of the excess fat? I don't know. I almost feel like not, maybe this. I mean, this is a little aggressively fatty. I could take that out, but I don't wanna take too much of the fat out. Fat is flavor after all. So yeah, just chop this up into little squares and then you're gonna wanna get your short ribs too. Now there's not much prep work with the short ribs, but you do wanna have them on standby. Uh, we will need them shortly. Short ribs, we need them shortly. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, I had these at Universal Studios. They've got like a Mardi Gras event they do and they had burrilla tacos in the uh, Mexico food booth. And I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta try making these. They're so good. They like melt in your mouth. You just gotta try them guys. Hopefully this recipe is good. I asked ChatGPT to make the world's best basically and hopefully it comes through and they're even better than what I had at Universal. They probably will be. Now, the reason I'm doing this at night is because this calls for marination overnight. 
for the best result. And I want the best result, so that's what I'm doing. So like I said, we also want short ribs. I went and grabbed those out of my fridge. Actually got these in a, we did a different recipe. I can't remember what it was, but it was pretty recent and they were good, uh, but I saved some. So I'm just gonna use the leftovers. I kind of wish I had a little more short rib, but I think it'll be okay. I'm supposed to have two pounds. I think this is like a pound and a half. We also want two to three chipotles in adobo sauce, which literally it's just that. Okay, one, two, three. And you can do more of them if you want it extra spicy. I'm not gonna do more of them. Three's enough, I'm not that tough. Okay, I've got a bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and put all my meat into said bowl, including the short ribs. We're not taking them off the bone, as far as I can tell. We're literally just putting them in whole. And these are gonna marinate overnight once we finish making the marinade, which we're almost done with. You're gonna want some sort of food processor or blender. I've got this little food processor, this little ninja. I do like it, it works well. So I'm gonna use that. These are kind of small. I might add a fourth. I'm just that crazy. Okay, so we also want, I hope my blender is gonna be big enough to do all this. A medium onion quartered, it says. So just take an onion and quarter it. This is all for the marinade. So I'm just gonna take the skin off and then I'll cut the little, the little ends off here. All right, and then we just cut it into quarters. And that's gonna go, oh, you know what, we could blend that now, so. Cause I think the whole onion goes in there. Yeah, it does. So why don't we just chop that now so we get more space. This isn't really a big, uh, big blender. So let's just see what happens here. See, look at all that space. Oh, we gotta break this one up too. Hmm. One more. Yeah, I think, we'll, oh gosh. <laughs> the power cord's pulling on it. We also want five cloves of garlic, which I got the pre-peeled stuff, cause I'm lazy. One, two, three, four, five. That'll get blent up in there too. Blent, is that a word? Sure, let's call it a word. Nice. All right, so we have a bunch more stuff to add to this, starting off with apple cider vinegar. Okay, anyways, so we need one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. That's gonna go into the marinade as well. Followed by one teaspoon of cumin seeds. I couldn't find cumin seeds, but I got normal cumin. I think it's probably the same idea, is it? Maybe it's gonna be too heavy handed. Let me see if I can find the seeds. All right, so I think we can just use three quarters of a teaspoon as a substitute according to what the chat GPT is telling me. There's a half and then we'll use a quarter. So three quarters teaspoons of cumin, one teaspoon of dried oregano leaves. So I'm just gonna add that here. A quarter teaspoon of cloves, who'd have thought cloves. Quarter teaspoon of those. Ground, well, I don't like the smell of that really. That smells weird. And then uh, half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. This is an elevated recipe, so it's gonna be unique, I would assume. ChatGPT always adds interesting things. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon, but I don't know, is cinnamon normal in that? And then a little salt and pepper to taste. So, eh, I'll go a little heavier on the salt. And then some pepper, and let's mix it up again. There we go. Now we're gonna add our actual peppers that have been soaking for about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes now. They should be softened, hopefully. Moment of truth. Are you soft, Mr. Peppers? Oh yeah, they're nice and soft. I guess we should take the stem thingy off. We'll just load them in there. I assume we don't wanna eat the stem. This is pretty simple, right guys? Simple enough. And this is all gonna be our marinade. A lot of peppers. All right, so that's all of those, and this thing's pretty full now. Let's try to mix it again and see if it all gets together. There it is. It's glorious, maybe a little longer. Would you call it glorious? I'm calling it glorious. All right, so this is the next step, and this is all we're gonna do tonight. We're almost done with tonight's work. We're gonna take this marinade, dump it over our beef, and just make sure that it's kind of covering everything. And I'm just gonna use my hands for that, because why not? And just kind of mix it all in. You want it to kind of soak overnight, if possible, four hours, if not. Oh yeah, that's nice and, uh, uh oh, I lost a little meat. I would say that's pretty covered. Now we're just gonna cover that in plastic wrap, put it in the fridge, and we'll be back tomorrow to finish off these amazing burrito tacos. And we're back. Good morning, everyone. I have my meat that we marinated overnight for our burrito tacos. I did take them from the metal bowl and poured them into this like stock pot, this Dutch oven, cause we're gonna be cooking it today. And it's gonna need, you know, a nice big pot for that. So what we wanna do now is we wanna add beef broth. And you see, I did the marinade too. I kind of put it all in there. The whole entire bowl's worth from last night is now in here. Four cups is basically a giant carton of beef broth. So I'm just gonna dump that in to our mix here. This really is pretty easy, this whole thing. All right, that's all in there, four cups of that. Now we wanna add some orange juice. It says fresh orange juice, so I literally just got an orange. Is that what I should have done? I don't know, maybe it would have been easier to just buy orange juice instead of trying to be fancy. This is half a cup. Do I have to measure it? I really don't want to, guys. Am I lazy? I'm just gonna squeeze it in there. That looked like, what, a quarter of a cup? Yeah, I think one orange is gonna be about a half a cup. Now I wanna eat an orange, it smells good. So half a cup of an orange, of orange juice and I'm just gonna use one whole orange squeeze. I think at scale, this'll be fine. 
like Hulkamania. I need to get a garbage can. All right, so this next ingredient, I had a little trouble finding the right thing. It's agave syrup. Agave syrup, A-G-A-V-E. Sounds fancy. I don't know why we don't just use maple, but let me smell it. It doesn't smell like maple. Uh, so two tablespoons of that. I bet you could use maple. You didn't want to buy this. One, oop, and a heaping two. <laughs> and we want some bay leaves. Two bay leaves, plop, plop. I think that's everything in there. I think that's everything that we need in there. So we got the agave syrup, the beef broth, all that stuff. All right, so we're gonna get this onto the heat and bring it up to a boil. Oh, I did sort of kind of clean my grill a little bit. Didn't really come that clean. But anyways, pop it onto the heat. We'll bring it to a boil and then we'll bring it down to a simmer. All right, so it's been like five, six minutes and our Berea mix combo, whatever that is. Oh, I looked it up. It's not B-A, it's B-I. So it's like Berea, Berea, Berea or something. I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments if I'm saying it wrong. Berea. But now that it's boiling, I'm going to lower the heat to a simmer and we have to let it simmer for three to four hours until the meat is falling off the bone of our short ribs. That way we know it'll be ready to shred because it's gonna be a shredded dish and it is gonna be so stinking good. I'm excited about three to four hours from now. What time is that? Oh, right around lunchtime. Yeah, right around lunchtime. So it's gonna be a great lunch. All right, we'll see you back here in just a bit. Okay, I'm pretty pumped. The Berea Tacos, Berea? Berea Taco. <clears throat> Birria with a double R. Beer <laughs> Words are hard. Birria tacos are almost done. Well, I mean, we still have more steps, but the meat itself is almost there. Like, I just looked at it, and it's starting to fall off the bone. I don't think we're too far off from being able to put this thing together and try it, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's been probably three hours that the meat's been tenderizing. We're gonna have to uh, put together a bunch of like sides though, because you want to kind of give people the flexibility to do what they want with their delicious dish here. And one of the things we're gonna offer as a topping, an optional topping, is diced onions. So I'm just dicing up an onion incorrectly for your viewing entertainment. I'll say this, like, I watch a lot of cooking videos and the commenters are always like really brutal. Uh, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, doing this wrong. And I came into this channel expecting to get the same because I know I do a lot wrong when it comes to cooking. Like I'm not a very good chef, but you know, I can put together a dish and make something edible generally. Although what is edible, that's always questionable. Uh, but, and I know like, I think some people who are super pro cooks probably just stop watching me, but I don't get a bunch of the hate comments. I think it's because like, I'm so upfront and forward about the fact that I know I'm not gonna impress you with my cooking skills. And so many other channels like kind of are trying to impress you with their cooking skills. People don't even really try to correct me. They're just like, Dave, we know you stink. We're just gonna let you stink and do your little thing here. <laughs> I get the occasional comment, but not, not as much as I expected. I may have other YouTube channels, and if I did, they would have way more negativity on them than this one does. All right, so dice up some onions as an optional garnish. Is it a garnish though? If you eat it, I guess it's not a garnish. You don't wanna get your wages garnished. That much I know for sure. I do think though, like I know someone who uh, I don't think watches my videos anymore because they're actually like good at cooking. And I think I was driving them bonkers with my lack of skills. Anyways, we want some lime wedges as well. That'll be just like a side item and someone can like squeeze the lime onto their taco once it's done. So some lime wedges. Then some uh, chopped up cilantro as an option. Ooh, I have an open cut on my finger and onion juice and lime juice are not helping it. Additional things to have on standby, sour cream, pickled red onions, says ChatGPT, pickled jalapeno slices, and this gives people some more things that they can put on their dish. I'm just gonna set this behind me while we work on the next steps. These birilla tacos, I don't know what they are. Uh, you know, interesting thing happening here, and I kinda had to be like, you know what? I'm gonna take it out. The interesting thing that's happening is I'm running out of liquid. <laughs> I'm literally running out of liquid. Now, the short rib is kind of falling off the bone, but not like aggressively, like when I smoke something. So I think it could use a little more time, but if there's no liquid, I don't know that the time's gonna do much because they're not even submerged anymore. Let me know what you think about that. But the actual like, yeah, look at that. The chuck roast is like totally falling apart. So what I wanna do is, hmm, what's the best way to do this? I wanna get the meat out somehow. So my goal is to get all the meat out while saving some sauce because the sauce is a big part of a urea taco. So I'm gonna use this little strainer thingy and see if I can get the meat and leave the sauce. I don't know if this is right. Yeah, it seems like I'm saving the sauce. This is kinda, kinda working. Bay leaves are not really good eats, so put that on the side. The short ribs didn't work that well, I don't know. I might have done something wrong, but the chuck roast did. 
I wasn't able to get all the meat off the short ribs. So here's what we're left with, and this is supposed to be the consomme, like the liquid. There is some liquid in there, but it is still like pretty light as far as how much is left. Okay, so it says I can add more liquid just by adding a little beef broth and bringing it up to temp, but I don't have any beef broth. Those, uh, one of those it is what it is situations, we have a little liquid, but not much. We'll make do, we'll make do. I think there's a lot of deliciosity wrapped up in the, the meat itself though, so I'm not that concerned about it. So what we wanna do is we wanna just shred the meat. Uh, okay, so I did look though, I did look. What we should have done, instead of me taking it off, although this is really ready to be shred, so maybe it's not the end of the world, but instead of just taking it off the heat, what I probably should have done was add more beef broth while it was uh, on the heat and just keep letting it go for another hour. That's what you should do if you come into this situation where like your meat's not fall off the bone yet, but you're running out of liquid, just add more beef broth and let it keep rolling. So now I know. I think that the uh, chuck roast is more than done. It's ready to roll. It was just a short rib that didn't really come all the way. But I know I used a little extra chuck roast than I was supposed to. Cause I was supposed to use like two pounds and I used like two and a quarter or something. So it's not the end of the world. We'll still have plenty of meat to uh, flavor ratio or good meat to flavor ratio. Thing with this recipe is it's gonna be so flavorful it's gonna knock our socks off. I already know it. Here's the next step. Heat up a skillet. Now what's weird is it says to heat up the corn tortilla on the pan first, which maybe this is what you're supposed to do. Uh, for how long? I don't know. I could ask it for clarity. Yeah, so until they're slightly brown. So like 30 seconds on each side, side it says. How long has it been? It's been about that. And then flip it. It's probably been 30. It says it's supposed to slightly brown and it hasn't yet. That one has. All right, you see that? So after a minute, after they start to get a little crispy, we're gonna dip them into this consomme, this sauce here, which we don't have much of, but hopefully it's enough to at least get them wet with it. That's probably about long enough, I would say. Maybe 10 more seconds. All right, we're gonna take them, we're gonna plop them in here, which I don't think you can see, but here, see, 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 can you see? Right there. On both sides, like that. I mean, that just feels like oil, grease, but do that to all three of them. I think, I think I'm doing it right. Let me know, guys, if you've ever cooked this. Then you put the meat in it. I guess bring that over here, like so. This might be too much meat for one. And then I think you fold it over like so. I think. I'm saying I think a lot because I don't know. Oh, that's so hot. I need like a second hand. There we go. Okay. So is this, that's definitely too much meat on that one. That's all right. Like so. Sure. Fry it until it's crispy. So is it crispy yet? Flip it, do I flip it? I assume I have to flip it like that. Let's flip this one. I like this one the best as far as like quantity of meat. The other ones are like bursting forth. Try to keep the meat in there. Yeah, that seems crispy. It kind of looks like what I've had before, so I don't think we're too far off, really. Uh, voila, brava, bravissima. Berea, berea tacos are looking like they're done. Got a little onion and cilantro with them. You take the lime, I guess, and just, you know, drizzle it on there a little. And then we're gonna try it. All right, here we go. Dang, it worked guys. We did it. Those are really good. Those are birria beer, tacos, just like I had at Universal, except mine are a little better than the ones I had at Universal. So that's a win. Those are really good. The meat like melts in your mouth. It's so flavorful, it's crazy. Crazy, crazy how good that is. Uh, I'm pleased as punch and I recommend you try these too. Everything I've been making lately, I'm recommending because it's all good. This one's a little work, it's a labor of love, but it's definitely really good. A little more lime on it. Oh, I wanna try one with sour cream. Let me get some sour cream. I gotta pop them into the juice, like the corn kid. It's got the juice. The corn does, that means. Corn's got the juice, according to the corn kid. Again, I'm just like dipping it in that sauce, and I, it makes sense, because it's got that like color that they always have whenever I get them. Boom. Boom. We also didn't try the pickled stuff. We should try that too. Look at how like melty and good that meat looks. I threw a little sour cream on this one. I don't even think it's necessary, but might as well try it with sour cream. Mm. Guys, these are crazy delicious. Like crazy delicious. You would certainly not regret making these. Every now and then I make a dish and I'm like, oh, if so-and-so, like one of my friends ever comes over, I'm gonna make them this dish. This one is one of those. Like this I'm gonna make again, really just to impress my friends. Shallow, I know, but it's that good that it's an impressive thing to do for your friends. 
All right, guys, we're done with this. I'm gonna keep making these. I got a lot to go. I mean, I have so much meat left that I'll keep making them. I think they're great. I think you should try them. I would be shocked if you weren't pleased. You know, I don't even know if you need the short rib. I think the short rib might just be a way to make it more expensive. I think the chuck roast is a cheaper option and it like cooked easier too. So I would maybe skip the short ribs if I was you and just do chuck roast. It's cheaper, easier, and incredibly delicious. So. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by the AI Kitchen. I hope to see you next time. Make sure you subscribe so Google doesn't hide me from your future. Bye-bye.